Welcome to Critical Issues Commentary, the podcast ministry of Gospel of Grace Fellowship, a non-denominational Christian church in St. Louis Park, Minnesota. This is Jessica Kramis, your host for today, and I'm speaking with Bob DeWay, Gospel of Grace's teacher and theologian and author of Critical Issues Commentary. In this series, we are talking about CIC issue number 122, the gospel as the true armor of God. You can find that at the website CICministry.org. Now, the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about how we, all the, the body of the redeemed, all of us together, are Christ's inheritance. And we've discussed how God uses the trials in our lives to refine and purify his inheritance, but we are safe and protected in him. But now if we swing back to Deuteronomy 32, 8 and 9, there's another lot. If we are Christ's lot, there's another lot. So I'm going to read Deuteronomy 32, 8 and 9, and then you can um, help us understand what this all means. Okay. Okay. When the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance, when he divided mankind, he fixed the borders of the peoples according to the number of the sons of God. But the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is his allotted right. heritage. Okay, so that passage is very, very important. And recently there's been a lot of discussion among some theologians about it. And it seems to be pretty clear in the newer translations like the ESV that you quoted, okay. recognize that the, the much, much older Masoretic text, text from like 950 AD has according to the sons of Israel. But that doesn't really make a lot of sense because the sons of Israel are under Yahweh. And so who are the nations divided according to? And right. the, the older sure. text, the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is way older, uh, and the uh, Septuagint, the Greek translation that was done uh, a couple hundred years over, 200 years BC, have angels of God or sons of God, but it doesn't have this Israel, because otherwise you don't see the contrast. The contrast, the nations are under these, Okay. Israel's under Yahweh. Okay. So that's been pretty much the consensus that the correct reading is that the nations are under these sons of God. Now, who are the sons of God? Well, we've talked about that. They're revealed in Job, and we looked at 1 Kings 22 and so on. These are part of the divine council that includes fallen beings. Okay? Right. So right. the nations are under... Uh, these other beings also, by the way, in the other passages called the host of heaven. Yes. And we're going to see the that in the Testament in Stephen's speech. And in fact, when Stephen speaks at the time when he was ultimately martyred, that's what made them so angry. And I think they were angry because they knew it was true. Yes. They didn't like yeah. it, but it was really true. They had mm -hmm. gone into so much idolatry that they were put back under the sons of God, like all the nations. Wow. Because they had rejected Yahweh. And okay. just to underscore that that's what had happened, we see uh, in this article, I cite Acts 742a as, as part of Stephen's speech, okay? So let's okay. see what happens. So Israel is supposed to be under Yahweh, but they committed idolatry and went out after the host of heaven, the sons of God. And so the judgment of hardening is when God turns somebody over to something. Right. If you don't want to serve me, okay, here you go. Go serve the demons and Satan and whatever, because that's the other alternative. And it's the, the only other alternative. Yeah, the other alternative is the domain of darkness. We'll talk mm -hmm. about that later. Uh, if not today, in one of these future broadcasts. Uh, but Stephen indicted the Sanhedrin, the Jewish Leadership Council, and uh, told them what happened when Israel rebelled against Yahweh. And she, Israel, was turned over to the host of heaven. Let me quote that. Quote, okay. but God turned away 
and delivered them up to serve the host of heaven. Acts 7, 42a. All right. So now, if we want to look at the present circumstance, and we're talking about Ephesians and the armor of God, it, God's lot or God's inheritance are Jew and Gentile who have been transferred from the domain of the spirits of darkness and who, uh, which are the nations are under and transferred in the kingdom, into the kingdom of his beloved son, Colossians one okay. thirteen. And so um, if you are not under Jesus Christ, the Lord, if your sins are not washed away and you're like everybody else, you're under the host of heaven. It's the only other possible thing. It's one or the other. It's one or the other, according to the Bible. Now, there's differences. of certain. There, we have the table of nations and we have national boundaries. On the scene of history, God uses civil rulers. So right. humans don't directly interact with the world of the spirits. Yes. They want to. We saw that at Babel. But right now, God has us under civil rulers on the scene of history. But spiritually, they're still under the domain of these hostile powers. Right. Now, friends, if this is a new concept for you, Bob and Pastor Eric did an excellent series on this about a year or so ago. And you can find that on our YouTube channel or on the radio archives on the website. I believe it was called How God Rules His World. And they go into much more detail there than what we can do in this episode. But it's really an important thing to understand to truly have a biblical worldview. It's essential. And not everybody's even read the scriptures that describe this or taken them literally. Right. But if we're going to understand the armor of God in Ephesians, which is what this series is about, then we need to know what the issues are when Paul in chapter six talks about the rulers and authorities and so on, which are uh, that we wrestle against, according to Ephesians six, and they are hostile spiritual powers. Right. And that's what everybody was under until they came to Christ, and now they're God's inheritance. That's what we've been talking about. Amen. Or God's law. We're under Christ. We're not under those beings. And so what we want to know is how do we stand and not cave into the temptations or the accusations or the attacks. And we don't do so, as we've been saying, by doing processing of our own past, breaking up curses from things God's already delivered us from, or interacting with the world of spirits. We stand by believing the promises of God, trusting God through the gospel, and then the armor that God has given us are all things that directly relate to the gospel. All right. It's not secret knowledge. Now, it's interesting what happened. So Deuteronomy 32, 8, 9 says, Israel was under Yahweh, the nations are under the sons of God. Okay. okay. Now, Israel rebelled, rejected God, rejected God's prophets, and so on. And what happens? Well, Stephen said, God delivered them up to serve the host of heaven. So how did they respond? How did they like what Stephen said to them? <laughs> Should we read that? Okay. Well, I won't read all of it, but let's summarize. I'll let me give you a little of it. Okay. You can read the article or look it up in the Bible, Acts 7, 54 through uh, Acts 8, 1. And when they heard these things, they were enraged in their hearts. So this really poked at it. They got really outraged about that and gnashed their teeth at him. And but said, but Stephen, filled by the Spirit. By the way, when you read Luke Acts, which is a two-volume work, by the Holy Spirit inspired author Luke, when someone speaks after the Holy Spirit comes upon them throughout Luke Acts, they're speaking truth. Right. And it's very important. That's how Luke gets our attention. Stephen's address is a key part of Luke Acts. Okay. So 
filled by the Spirit, gazed into heaven, and he saw God's glory with Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And then he said, see, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they screamed at the top of their voices, covered their ears. No, no, no. Have you ever seen somebody do that, either literally or figuratively? Mm -hmm. You share the gospel with them or you tell them the truth. I don't want to hear it. Okay, that's what they did. But he was telling them the truth. The reason they were so outraged and full of anger was the fact that they were serving the host of heaven and they weren't serving Christ. Right. They they had thought they were rid of him. But God raised him from the dead and he bodily ascended to heaven. That's narrated earlier in Acts chapters 1 and 2 and so forth, especially chapter 1. So the disciples and many others witnessed him ascending to heaven. So okay. what happens? Well, now they're outraged because Stephen has a vision of the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. The Son of Man, by the way, is a reference to the Messiah as described in Daniel. Yes. Okay. And so they threw him out of the city. They stoned him. He said, receive my spirit. He forgave them. Do not charge them against us. But while this is happening, uh, and, and he went to be with the Lord, Saul, who later would become Saul, agreed with putting him to death. So Saul, who is the Paul who wrote Ephesians before his conversion, was like the rest of them. He wouldn't believe he was really under the host of heaven. Right. He wouldn't believe that the only way out of that condition was to come to Christ and to serve him. And he didn't realize or believe or understand until God converted him in Acts chapter 9 that Jesus really is ruling at the right hand of God. Now, that's an allusion to Psalm 110 and verse 1. Okay. Okay. And that the psalm, which is the most quoted one, Psalm 110, most quoted one in the New Testament, is saying that he rules in heaven until and then there's a later time of the defeat of God's enemies. Yeah, okay, yeah. So here's Saul, outraged and wanting Stephen dead, agreeing with it, and then himself taking off to... A fight against any Jews who had become Christians. Yeah. Raging, blaspheming, angry. See, uh, dear listeners, the truth sometimes causes people to become very, very angry. And it's just, it's true today. Yeah, it sure is. And um, I wouldn't, don't ever allow that to cause you to back of, I mean, we want to be tactful, but the only thing we have to tell people is the truth. Okay. Right. And Stephen proved what he had said through scripture. And then there were eyewitnesses there that had seen the resurrected Christ. Um, and the gospel had been preached by Peter and others, but they were very angry. But we don't know who it is will be the next Saul of Tarsus. There won't be any more apostles but there'll be others who were angry and become converted. Right. Okay. So we shouldn't give up. Okay. So later Paul comes to Christ in Acts 9 and Paul no longer served the host of heaven. He was offended that, the, that Stephen suggested he was, but then when he was saved, he realized, Oh, I really was serving Satan. That's right. He very much went from darkness to light, right. just like the rest of us. Yeah. How many people, uh, and some of you, many of our listeners are Christians, If how many didn't even believe there was a Satan until after you got saved? <laughs> I think that's true of a lot of people. It wasn't me. And uh, the fact is, you may be just going about life and thinking, oh, everything's fine, and I'm a good citizen, and I pay my taxes and I raise my kids and I do a lot of good things and charitable deeds or whatever. 
And I'm sure the people that were hearing Stephen thought of themselves that way. But when he told them the truth, they became angry and outraged. Yes. Why? Because the truth is that unless we have come to Jesus Christ, the creator, the virgin born son of God, the sinless one, the one who died for sins, who shed his blood once for all, who was raised bodily on the third day and who bodily ascended to heaven and who reigns from the right hand of God, according to Psalm 110, verse 1. And many times that's cited in the New Testament. Unless we come to him, we're under the host of heaven, even if we don't believe there is any such thing. That's true. Or, which is more common today, you're under the host of heaven, even if you think the host of heaven is the universe and its benign, benevolent relationship to you. Right. And I've heard that one more now than people thinking there's no Satan. They think, well, I had somebody actually tell me that I was witnessing to. Well, I put myself in the hands of the universe. I, you hear that a lot. Yes. And people think the universe is somehow a deity and certainly in Ephesus, they had multiple deities, as they did throughout the Roman Empire. There were gods and goddesses and what have you. And now there's this idea that if you meditate or you go into an altered state of consciousness, you're somehow going to get connected up with the real, benign, peaceful, wonderful, true self, which is ultimately the universe. Right. Right. They worship and serve the creation rather than the creator. It's, it's yeah. Romans 1. Romans 1. And the person who told me that, I said, the universe doesn't care about you. Right. The, 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 universe. Uni the universe doesn't love you. No. <laughs> but see, there is a real host of heaven. Yeah. Beyond yeah, just the star. It could refer to the stars just as um, stars in the galaxies and so on but that's not what Stephen was talking about no he's talking about demons and the host of heaven really doesn't love you no but, but, they, but they don't you. care if you they, they don't care if you think they're just the universe just something happy out there they're more than happy to let you think that right and if you want to listen to the series we did with uh amy russell who was saved out of kundalini yoga and she thought she was going to find true peace yeah. And, uh, and through this oneness with the universe or Kundalini Yoga. But in the end, by God's grace, she realized it was actually demons trying to destroy her. That's right. Okay. So you can hear that series too um, on our website, CICMinistry.org. But the point is this a lot of people, I think most people now, you hear about yoga and this pantheistic or panentheistic worldview everywhere. It's the prevailing idea. Yeah. And they think that this is benign and good. Mm -hmm. Right? The Jews that heard Stephen preaching were offended because they didn't think the host of heaven was benign and good. They knew it was evil. Yes. But they didn't think they were serving the host of heaven. They thought they were the true servants of God. Right. And Stephen's basically said no well, in fact he didn't basically say it. he just said it all right you're serving the host of heaven so yeah, they yeah. killed him they stoned him mm -hmm. and Saul heard all of that and he said good get rid of him and now I'm going to find some more to get rid of but he met that's right Jesus Christ in the, as narrated in Acts 9 you can read it in your bible and he was converted and God sent a disciple to pray for him he lost his eyesight temporarily he regained it and then he went out and testified about christ so after being delivered from these hostile powers saul who saw the resurrected christ and was appointed as an apostle and was trained by christ wrote the book of ephesians that we're studying here in this series and told us how we can stand in freedom and not under these, the attacks of these powers. Right. 
he found out he was under them when God delivered him from them. Yes, and now he doesn't want to see Christians go back under, oh, don't so go right? back, don't interact with them. So. Exactly. Now here, let's just make a little analogy here. I just thought of this. Okay. Israel was put under Yahweh. We read that in Deuteronomy 32, 9. Yes. But they were warned by the prophets that if they rejected Yahweh, they'd end up like the pagans. Right. Under the host of heaven. Stephen said that's exactly what happened, especially when they rejected Christ. Not all, but some. Some of them did. There were some who believed, like the disciples, and then those who were converted on the day of Pentecost, and then others as Acts their age. But what would happen if people grew up in churches and they hear about the things of Christ? They at least sing old hymns that talk about it, or they may yeah. go to the Easter service and maybe they go to a church that has more than eggs and bunnies, but right. who knows? That's not even guaranteed. And some right. Easter services now are more just pagan. And uh, even the name Easter, I don't worry about the names as much as some people do, but the name really isn't a biblical idea. Right. Okay. But we do believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ as a historical event that vindicated his claims. Yep. Okay. So people have these things that surround them just like the Jews did. They still had their day of atonement. They still had their Passover. They still had all these things. And they kept having those things, even though they were under the host of heaven. Yeah. Okay. And so Christians today may think they're Christian because they go to a church and they have their hymnals and their uh, responsive readings or whatever they do in their churches. And uh, not all of them are, some are better than others. Some have the, the truth spoken. Some people just grew up in it. But, but that doesn't mean you're directly under Christ. You're under Christ when you are converted, when you confess him, when you trust him, when you believe in him, when you serve him and you worship him. He's the Lord. You're not under those of heaven. You're under Christ. Yes. So what we have today, and I was thinking about this as I'm beginning. To, now I'm going to start preaching through 1 Corinthians. I just finished Ephesians. Um, they didn't have Christendom in the first century. No, that, no, not at all. They just they had, had local Christians. churches. They just had Christians. Yeah. And they didn't have people that have been fourth generation growing up in a church. They may be under the host of heaven, just like the Jews were when, when Stephen, many Jews were when Stephen preached to them. Okay. But I think today we're back into a similar situation where now there's Christians who think they're under Christ, but they're actually under the host of heaven. That's right. Okay, and they may get just as angry um, as the people did when they heard Stephen. But I would say this, no matter how benign and benevolent, and look at all the churches that have yoga classes. And what I highlighted, I took a picture of a church that has a sign out front that said, we are the world. That's right. Okay which is a direct re refutation of what John said in first John, that we're not of the world. If we're right. Christians. So there's all sorts of church buildings and church organizations and people who grew up in church that are under the host of heaven. Okay. Yeah. If you're converted, God took you out of that. So therefore we need to stand firm. We're not going to, he's not going to lose us. We're not going to slip out of his hand. But as we talked about in recently, there's Judas and there's Peter. There may be a Judas around. Yeah. That'll just leave. So the warnings are still valid. So let me just say this. Those who come to Christ are God's inheritance. Um, they've been removed from darkness. They've been delivered from the hostile powers, however you call them, rulers, authorities, demons, 
spirits, hostile spirits, host of heaven, removed from that and made to be God's inheritance. We've talked about that. Those who reject the gospel, no matter how nice and kind and saintly they may appear, they're under the host of heaven. All right? And what do, what do people do? Well, nowadays they go to shamanism. They resort to the shamans and those in Asia Minor that wouldn't listen to the preaching of the apostles just went into them and continued in the mystery religions. Now, and people are doing the same thing today. It's just they aren't worshiping Artemis. Well, they have different but, names for what they're doing. I think the most common deception is through yoga. Right. And then it's very, very common for people to attribute deity to the entire universe as if the universe were God. But the problem with that is then you don't really have any God at all, because by definition, God is eternal and non-contingent. We've talked about that. The universe is subject to entropy, and it's slowly dying of heat death. And you might say, well, that may not happen for billions of years. But that's still finite. That's not infinite. Okay. Right. So if you put yourself in the hands of the universe... You put yourself in the hands of something that's dying. Okay. All that's right. That's true. That's absolutely true. And even science proves that. Mm -hmm. Some very honest people that are intellectuals who understand the implications of this just become nihilist and say, well, everything's meaningless. Religion is meaningless. And so eat, drink, be merry, tomorrow we die, as they say. Others are deluded and think there's some benign universe, universal spirit or whatever, and that it's all good and we just get recycled with whatever it is they believe. But we're here to tell you the truth. If you come to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God forgives your sins. The creator of the universe gives you promises, including eternal life, and that ultimately... If you die, you go to be with him, and there'll be a resurrection with a resurrected body, and you'll live forever with God. And that new heavens and new earth will not die of heat death. Right. It's truly eternal. Mm -hmm. And so if you instead think, well, the host of heavens, or I find peace through that, whatever you call it, you, you're actually communing with demons no matter how nice they are now, they may seem nice because they want to keep you in their domain. Right. But they're really wicked, evil demons. Mm -hmm. Really. They may, not, they may hide that for a long, long time. But sometimes they can't help themselves because they're so evil, they just want to attack you. Right. We found that out from Amy, our friend that, that we interviewed, who's now a Christian. So it's all a big lie. Come to Christ, trust in him, and God will give you true light. And then we'll continue as we go through the series to explain implications of being in the light, part of God's light, and how it is that we can continue to stand and not get sucked into the whole world religion of pantheism, panentheism, and so on. All right. We are out of time for this edition of Critical Issues Commentary Radio. We want to remind you, you can access this program and years worth of others at the website cicministry.org. And we want to remind you to stand firm in one spirit with one mind and strive together for the faith of the gospel. For Critical Issues Commentary, this is Jessica Kramis. And Bob DeWay. We'll see you next week. Amen. Yeah.